Chapter 411, The Collection of Gods Silence Not only Evan, other unaffiliated practitioners all fell into a long silence. Now, they had trouble getting along with Lu Xu, especially Evan. Due to the long history of conflicts between the Phoenix Society and the Heavenly Network, they were never on good terms with each other, though the former had never purposely targeted the latter. Honestly speaking, Evan was scared of being killed by Lu Xu. All of a sudden, a series of hasty footsteps were heard from not far away. Based on the sound, it seemed there were quite a number of them. Everyone let out a sigh of relief as the intense atmosphere lightened. Following the sound, they saw six Asians drawing close. Just when Evan was about to wave, the six of them gradually came to a stop, their expression cold as stone. Apparently, the air around them was not one of surprise or joy, but ambitions. Lu Xu frowned upon the detection of two class C's through their energy waves. How lucky must they be to gather two class C's together? This time, the opposite party spoke first. One of the class C's stared intently at Lu Xu and Mang Jingchun. Put all your cultivation resources and magical weapons on the floor and we will spare your lives. It was in Japanese, which was then translated into English by their translator behind. However, their accent was rather awkward. Despite being perceived as accurate by some for their clear articulation of each syllable, Lu Xu found it difficult to understand of sorry when being pronounced as sorry. Composed, Lu Xu asked in Japanese, You are from the collection of gods? Although Coral could not understand Japanese, it did not stop her from gazing at Lu Xu with admiration in her eyes. The boy of her dreams could actually speak Japanese. Impressive. At the moment, Lu Xu had occupied all her attention. So long as he displayed anything remarkable, Coral's eyes would be beaming with affection. The Class C leader fixed Lu Xu with a cold stare. Who are you? From the Heavenly Network? The collection of gods and the Heavenly Network had a complicated and hostile past. In the Beimang remains, none of the Cog spies made it out alive, and later on Ye Ting specifically went to the Cog for a killing spree and even returned unharmed. As a result, neither side would be merciful to the other upon their encounter. Lu Xu sneered. I'm a stranger. The Cog people drew a startled breath. Isn't that a given, idiot? Also, what's wrong with you? Why the sneer? From Haizo Niji's distress, plus 299. From. Unexpectedly, in the next instant, Lu Xu took the first move and the stream of divine water suddenly hurled forward towards the cog like a golden dragon. There was no reason to settle things peacefully. Besides, Lu Xu had never planned to go easy with cog people. Since a fight was unavoidable, he was going to unleash it all. Just when the opponents were putting their guard up, the dragon split into two and aimed directly at the two class C pros katanas. Although the divine water had engulfed a number of gargoyles, the number was far from enough. Moreover, due to their low quality equivalent to a piece of broken magical weapon, the volume of the water had only doubled to two rice cookers. During the battle, Lu Xu was already able to trap and consume two magical weapons simultaneously. Instead of the attempt to break through the two class C's spirit chi armor, he chose a safer approach, by weakening their fatality while expanding the water at the same time. The katana was good stuff, much better than broken weapons. The cog experts had no idea of the function of the golden water which soon encapsulated the swords in the blink of an eye and swelled up towards their palms and wrists at lightning speed. They could sense that the golden liquid was corroding their armor and the katana. What's that? The cock experts darted towards Lu Xu at the same time while forcing their spirit chi into action, in an attempt at resisting his divine water, thwarting its rate of erosion. But soon, to their surprise, the katanas could no longer be imbued with spirit chi. So, how was that different from scraps? Decisively, they immediately abandoned their katanas. Instantly ten plus shurikens were fired at Lu Xu with a wave of their hands. 
Meanwhile, other members behind them tossed their katanas to the two class Cs, sacrificing themselves in support of their leaders. However, in the next instant, Lu Xu had already dodged the blades and swerved towards the back. Chase him, thinking that Lu Xu was trying to escape in the knowledge that he could not win, the cog members decided to pursue. Though strange, the golden liquid did not seem any more useful besides its ability to consume two weapons simultaneously. Evan's people did not dare to follow. After all, if Lu Xu had failed, they would probably become the next target. Let's leave this place, as far as possible. A single class C can kill us all. Evan analyzed calmly. In his opinion, Lu Xu was at most a class C, no matter how strong he was. Didn't he run away already? There was no reply. Even those who had thanked Lu Xu for saving their lives had started walking in the opposite direction. Biting her lips, only Coral suddenly ran in Lu Xu's direction. She wanted to help Lu Xu in his fight. That made Mang Jingchan's heart shudder. In fact, she admired her straightforwardness. Her devotion to Lu Xu was simple and pure, just out of her love for him. But how about herself? She did not even dare to raise the topic even though she had hoped Lu Xu would join her team. No one expected Lu Xu to have any chances of victory over the cog pros. At the moment, after finishing up the two katanas, the divine water suddenly shot up to the sky and soared towards Lu Xu. It took much less time than the digestion of gargoyles due to the presence of that wisp of smoke. In the distance, Lu Xu gradually slowed down as he was certain that he was out of the sight of Evan's people. It was within his expectation that Evan had no guts to rescue him. Thus, he had purposely kept the distance so as to keep it a secret of his invisible storage equipment. Fixing Lu Xu with frosty stairs, the cog members closed in in a semicircular pattern. Lu Xu's voluntary pause was an indication of his intention to use his trump card, which made them even more alert. Watch out for his flying dagger. A powerful weapon. However, he only has one dagger but we have six people, the leader gave out instructions composedly. In addition, he had intentionally pointed out Lu Xu's weakness to pressure him. Chapter 412, Slaughter The two sides were locked in confrontation. Gambling on Lu Xu's inability to take the first move, the cog leader let out a loud roar, go. Quick as specters, the two class C's double-teamed Lu Xu while the other four provided support from the side. Their shurikens were already in their hands, aiming to hold Lu Xu up if not to cause harm. Even if Lu Xu's action was slowed by only one second, their bosses would have an easier time taking him down. It was a well-coordinated team. Leaping into the air, one of the class C's raised his katana high, ready to slash down from above Lu Xu's head, his blade glowing with an eerie purple light. Meanwhile, the other expert suddenly unleashed his body tricks, lowering his torso in a twisted manner, and struck towards Lu Xu's lower legs with incredible accuracy and force. Lu Xu would be dead no matter who he attacked with his flying dagger. Yet, in a split second, corpse dog and concealed arrow thundered out of Lu Xu's celestial map. Even the atmosphere started trembling. All cog members stared at the two flying daggers in disbelief. None of them expected to see two. Among the many heavenly network pros they had met, Lu Xu was the first to master the use of two flying daggers concurrently. The divine water swished forward, sinuating in the air like a winding dragon. As the cog class C's were busy guarding themselves against the assailing corpse dog and concealed arrow, Lu Xu had vanished from their sight. With a loud bang, Lu Xu punched hard into a supporting member on the outside of the formulation. Unable to withstand the impact, that low-level practitioner's bones caved in under his fist. Before that poor man could even touch the land after being thrown into the air, Lu Xu had come to his second victim. Inhale, exhale, and punch. The ground shook under him. Die. In the blink of an eye, two cog fighters were down. Yet, the two class C's were still being held back by the flying daggers, fully concentrated on the defense against the agile daggers. Clearly, Lu Xu had mastered the skill of utilizing his weapons as an extension of his own body. 
just when they were content that Lu Xu would prioritize wiping out the Class Ds before shifting his target to themselves, Lu Xu suddenly turned towards one of them. Under his feet, gray soils collapsed at once due to the reaction force, and his shoes soon cracked into pieces. Managing to dodge Corpse Dog, the leader immediately thrust his katana towards Lu Xu, but the sword missed its target. As though being controlled, the katana instantly swerved 180 degrees in the air and aimed at Lu Xu's back. At the same time, a shuriken shot out from the other hand of his, intending to slow down Corpse Dog's action. At this crucial instant, the divine water reached the site and immediately wrapped itself around the katana behind Lu Xu's back. The cog person felt sorry for his lost weapons. Despite having no idea of the identity of that golden liquid, its destructive ability on magical weapons was terrific. However, seeing that Lu Xu had been fighting with bare hands, it seemed that that was all he had. But the cog member had yet to unveil all his cards. Instantly, he retrieved a dagger from his lower leg. He was armed, but Lu Xu was not. But in a split second, a spear suddenly conjured up in Lu Xu's hands out of thin air, gleaming across its entire length. It was totally unexpected. The collection of gods was known for their unpredictable fighting techniques, but to their surprise, their young opponent was way better at this. He was equipped with invisible storage. What kind of monster was he? The spear pierced through the man's body. What a surprise! Yet, Lu Xu did not stop there. His flying daggers immediately surrounded the other class C, scraping their blades against his body without mercy. Joy and anger instantly evaporated from that man. Defense against two flying daggers was not within his abilities. The intense fight only lasted for less than a minute. Oftentimes, a typical combat between pros happens at lightning speed. Throughout the entire duration, there was neither speech nor screams, but only silence. All there was inside their brains was the fight. Following the blades, splashes of blood were pulled out from the man's wounds, owing to Lu Xu's water control abilities. When the man's consciousness was hanging on the edge, he was punctured by the flying daggers. Thus, the two experts had met their demise. If they had picked a fight with another ordinary class C, they would have certainly claimed their victory effortlessly. However, they were unlucky to have run into Lu Xu. Rapidly Corpse Dog and Concealed Arrow finished off the remaining two before returning to the Celestial Map. Until then, merely one minute had just passed. Then, Lu Xu heard Coral's voice from not far away, Run towards me, Lu Xu. I'm coming to help you. Lu Xu's spear disappeared at once, even his divine water was back to his seal of lands. When Coral arrived at the site, she was startled to see stains of fresh blood on Lu Xu's body, but cog members were all lying on the floor, breathless. And there he was, gazing at her from pools of blood and corpses, with tranquility displayed on his face. His clean and elegant facial features posed a stark contrast against the hellish background. Despite simply standing there still, an unquenched thirst for blood seemed to be emitting from him. Coral froze. She had seen blood, even more than other ordinary individual practitioners, but never had she expected Lu Xu to slaughter so many cog pros so fast. It suddenly struck her that the true reason for Lu Xu's escape was to conceal his trump cards. Wounds were clearly visible on the corpses, obviously left behind by sharp blades but there was nothing in Lu Xu's hands. Being a smart girl, Coral instantly knew the truth. But she had no intention to inquire further. On the contrary, a sense of worship was cultivated in her young heart, and soon went into full bloom. Only then did she truly realize how powerful Lu Xu could get. Certainly, he had yet to reach Class B, as in that instance he would have killed the cogs with a wave of his hand, no need for his trump cards. It had been tried and tested numerous times that only a coordinated team of more than six class Cs had a chance at overthrowing a low class B. Moreover, even if he was only class C, he must be one of the top. Coral had heard of such existences, as some class Cs in Northern Europe were already shining stars of the realm. 
as it was widely acknowledged that they would surely become terrific monsters should they ascend to Class B. Coral's smile was as bright as the spring sun. She whispered, I like you, Lu Xu. She chose to reveal her feelings beside the gory battlefield, as she was scared that there might not be a second chance. It was never wrong to admire the strong. What made her even more delighted was that she had fallen for him before she found out how strong he was, though Lu Xu did not think it was a big deal at all. Lu Xu was stunned by her confession. Then, hesitant, he replied shyly, well, so do I. Coral's eyes lit up. Really? Lu Xu nodded his head, sheepish. Yeah. I like myself too. Coral? From Coral Johnson's Distress, plus 666. Chapter 413, Scared Away. Actually, Lu Xu did not intend to provoke Coral. If anything was to blame, it was the fact that he had never been pursued by any girls before. Back in those days, Lu Xu was only a frail boy whose brain was full of making money. It was his own problem that no girl liked him, a loser who went to class in cheap t-shirts every day. Besides, relationships were never his priorities in so many years. He had only been focusing on earning a living and how to make more money to get Lu Xiaoyu a better life. As a result, he was not ready to embrace his current affluence. To tell the truth, he was genuinely happy for his encounter with Coral. The girl was frank and honest, and did not give up her passion for him even when knowing him as a mere class E. She was beautiful too. In Lu Xu's imagination, Lu Xiaoyu might only be prettier than Coral by a slight bit after she grew up. To him, that was considered very attractive. However, Coral belonged to Northern Europe and she was a member of the deities. Unable to see a future together, Lu Xu subconsciously refused to entertain the romantic idea. It was really not the time to think about those kinds of things, he thought to himself seriously. But Coral did not seem to get upset either. After a pause of two seconds, her face lit up. Lu Xu, I guess I am trying too hard. Whether you believe it or not, I never believed in love at first sight until I met you. I am certain about my feelings for you, not for your capabilities, nor your appearance. But when I saw you, it felt like I finally caught a glimpse of the land after traversing the seas of peril for a lifetime. Slow down, please. You are speaking too fast, in fact. Lu Xu was still practicing his English listening and he had difficulty catching up with Coral's rapid speech. From Coral Johnson's Distress, plus 188. Maybe my feelings are not reciprocated yet, or maybe I myself am not ready for it. It is my first time to fall for someone, and I am worried that I may not be good enough. But I will not give up. Can I have your number, please? Coral continued her sentence despite Lu Xu's disruptive interruption. In fact, she was one of the few who could stay calm under Lu Xu's verbal attack. A commendable feat indeed. I don't have a phone, Lu Xu lowered his voice. How about your address? I can write you letters, Coral pressed on. Nor a house. I need to mail you the check as a form of gratitude, Coral said. Bungalow number 7, Xingxu Road 4, Luocheng, Yuzhou. Coral. There were no distress points this time, because Coral was happy for figuring out how to get along with Lu Xu in such a short time. How about your number? A smile glinted on the corner of her lips. I need it to mail you the package. 158385, Lu Xu gazed at the rolling dark clouds in the sky with distress across his face. Finally the day had come when one of his greatest weaknesses was exposed. How old are you? Coral asked. Lu Xu raised his brows. There's no need to know that to mail me things. Fine. Coral typed down his address and number in her phone and insisted, but I will know it sooner or later. It was Lu Xu's first time to meet a girl so direct. Moreover, her understanding nature and pure intentions caught Lu Xu off guard. However, the long distance between them would eventually wash off her feelings, wouldn't it? But Lu Xu thought that it was something worth remembering. 
Regardless of the future, it was a beautiful memory at the moment. Clasping her hands behind her, Coral walked towards Evan's campsite, her wavy hair swaying behind her back like silky tassels. Remember to reply to my letters. Suddenly, Coral sensed something was wrong, and she turned to see Lu Xu had disappeared into nowhere. Looking vacantly at the opaque sky, sadness crossed her heart. He got scared away. After her return, Evan's team was already gone. Just when disappointment crept in, Evan's head appeared from behind a rock, why? Couldn't find him? Coral was stunned. Soon, other people walked out from behind the stones. Surprisingly all of them were hiding here. Shaking her head, Coral announced proudly, Lu Xu killed them all. She could not explain the swelling sense of pride, but the emotion was real. Evan and his people exchanged startled stares. No one questioned Coral, as Li Yixiao's appearance had shed more mysterious light on Lu Xu. But they were still caught in shock by the knowledge that Lu Xu could actually kill six experts in one go. Evan felt his inflamed ego dampened. Truly, he still had a long way to go. Emily, come here. I want to have a word with you. Emily. Lu Xu smacked his lips as notifications of new distress points were sent in continuously. He left not only to avoid Coral, but the team as well. He would certainly become the target if Evan happened to unite with experts from the Phoenix Society. They might not be interested in individual practitioners, but many organizations took joy in hunting down Heavenly Network members. Besides, no one would know if he was killed in the remains. Now, he had two katanas and two tontos. It was a common misconception among those who watched anti-Japanese TV series that tontos were solely used for seppuku star. In fact, traditionally tontos were used by medieval Japanese warriors in close combat or fights in a confined environment. Asterisk seppuku, a form of Japanese ritual suicide by disembowelment. And there were a number of ways to perform seppuku, including one horizontal cuts, three horizontal cuts and jumanji giri, meaning cross-shaped cut. The latter two were less common than the first. Many people might ask, wasn't it excruciatingly painful to cut one's belly open? How could Japanese warriors withstand that? Actually, the reality was not so. Since the Edo era, seppuku had become more of a symbolic ceremony. At first, people were brave enough to cut themselves. In the moment of agony, they would be beheaded by the Kaisha Kunin, also known as the man who assisted the death. No matter how much force the person applied, the first cut would be at most 5 to 10 centimeters deep due to the thick adipose tissues at one's belly. Then, the horizontal cut would be around 12 to 20 centimeters in length. After the completion of the two steps, the person would have lost about 200 milliliters of blood, equivalent to the amount donated one off at a blood donation drive. Even if the person applied another strike to complete the cross, he would not bleed to death at once. According to the record, the man who survived the longest after performing seppuku was Takayama Hikakuru. In 1793, he cut his abdomen at 2 p.m. but only swallowed his last breath at 9 a.m. the next day after a whole 19 hours. Thus, people collapsing to death at once after seppuku as depicted on the screens was pure nonsense. What purpose did seppuku serve? When a warrior was about to be defeated or captured, he would want to die an honorable death. Hence, he made the message clear to his opponents, I am not afraid of death. Do you hear me? However, they may still remain conscious for a while afterwards. Therefore in practice, such a serious ritual might result in people whining, fainting, rolling on the floor, crying their eyes out and other ridiculous endings. You would never know what might happen. Thus, later on, the tanto was replaced with a fan or a wooden sword. Once the seppuku performer reached out for it and put it on his belly as a necessary step of the ceremony, Kashikunin's sword would immediately chop off his head. Then, the ritual would end in perfection. Judging from its history, one could tell Japanese warriors' fixation on seppuku. They would carry it out no matter what. 
As he walked, Lu Xu fed to his divine water all the weapons he had gathered from the collection of gods. Having the water increase in size at a visible rate, the consumption of gargoyles could surely be done more effectively later. Speaking of which, he was reminded of Li Yixiao. That man had cleared all the gargoyles in the entire region. At the other side of the remains, Anthony was sealing up a gargoyle stone under Lu Xiaoyu's control. But suddenly, she changed her mind. Instantly the stone collapsed inwards and crushed the gargoyle inside with its a tight grip. Lu Xiaoyu raised her gaze to the sky in bewilderment. Why, do I have this sudden urge to kill? Chapter 414 The Miserable Life of Individual Practitioners On barefoot, Lu Xu trekked across the gray land and had to climb over black rocks occasionally. Just a moment ago, the fight with the collection of gods had shattered both his shoes. However, he had only brought extra clothing in his seal of lands, not shoes. He walked past cracked stones one after another, grumbling at Li Yixiao's impulsiveness. Speaking of which, should he follow in Li Yixiao's direction? In any case, he had more than enough gargoyles and perhaps Lu Xu could have some fun catching them one by one? However, Lu Xu was concerned about one thing. Based on his knowledge of Li Yixiao, there was a good chance of him becoming the public enemy in the end. Although Li Yixiao was not afraid of being sieged by a group of Class B experts, Lu Xu certainly was. Thus, he started advancing in another direction, hoping to find a path untraveled by Li Yixiao. Finding the relic was none of his priorities, but he would have hit the jackpot if he could run into more COG members. Their equipment was much more valuable than broken weapons and gargoyles. Then, Lu Xu changed his clothes and even put on a cap and a mask, so that the previous group would not recognize him upon their second encounter. After all, his identity as a Heavenly Network member was already exposed, and there was COG blood on his hands. Although he would never make peace with the COG, he knew of better things to do than charge forward head-on like an idiot against Class B opponents. However, he had a recurring feeling that the remains was ridiculously huge, as though he could never reach its boundary. At the very least, there were different surroundings in the previous remains, but why were there only stones in this one? After walking for an entire afternoon, Lu Xu did not see a single gargoyle. Who the hell knew what route Li Yixiao had picked? Maybe he had purposely come here to provoke the monsters. At nightfall, as soon as Lu Xu put on his earplugs, he saw two people approaching in the dimming light. Lu Xu's presence immediately drew them closer. Two Class C experts? Lu Xu frowned. Coming to a stop, the one in front asked Lu Xu in English, individual practitioner? Lu Xu took out his earplugs and asked, what? The two Caucasians were dressed in the same outfit. It looked like the uniform of some organization and was bright red. Usually, one would not wear such a bright color in the dangerous situation, unless he had a strong backing. Then, the two stared in disbelief as Lu Xu put his earplugs back in before they could answer. The pair did not use anything to guard against the howling, except for their class C strength. But how could you hear us after you put your earplugs back in again? From Stanton Hope's Distress, plus 88. From. Lu Xu nodded in acknowledgement. That fellow was called Stanton. Regardless of other people's choice, he would wear earplugs, though the baying would not cause any harm to him given his capabilities. At most he would be annoyed by the dolefulness therein. However, why must he listen to that unpleasant noise when he could choose not to? Then, Stanton almost screeched, Are you an individual practitioner? We are of Class C. Come with us. In their judgment, Lu Xu's bare feet were an indication of his weakness. They had met and mocked many individual practitioners who had lost their shoes when running for their life away from gargoyles. Besides, in their opinion, the strong could withstand the wailing with their sheer strength and only losers needed to rely on earplugs. If Lu Xu had known this judging criterion of theirs, he would probably had knocked their idiotic heads together. This time Lu Xu heard him. But where are you leading me to? Why were they so strange? In most cases, 
people targeted either lives or resources. But why did they ask Lu Xu to go with them? Why? Were they treating him to a meal? How hospitable. Fine. Lu Xu was deliberating whether they had things up to his divine water's standard. As though content that Lu Xu would not dare to escape, the pair led Lu Xu back the same path they had come. In fact, they had captured quite a few unaffiliated practitioners, who would not even run knowing their class C status. After another hour, suddenly Lu Xu vaguely heard rowdy noise ahead. A person was shouting loudly, Dig! Quick! Slackers die! Lu Xu finally understood. It appeared that the organization was taking captive of all individual practitioners in the region for slavery. But what were they digging for? Following the two class C's, he climbed over a small gray hill. Downhill, hundreds of individual practitioners were plunging their fingers into the soils at an empty space. Despite their extraordinary strength, for a practitioner to dig with bare hands, it was indeed miserable. At the moment, there were more than a dozen practitioners in red uniform, among whom were three class C's. It suddenly reminded Lu Xu of the walking encyclopedia at the beach recounting that a British practitioner's organization loved red suits. According to him, they had brought in a number of pros, and their ability was rather remarkable. Reality showed they were very lucky too. After knowing that gargoyles would become obtuse at night, they immediately began looking for team members on the first night instead of searching for resources. On the first night alone, five class C's had joined together, with many others afterwards. In spite of the absence of their class B members, a team of five class C's could already turn their noses at unaffiliated practitioners. Even lone class C's from powerful organizations did not dare to try their luck with them. It was completely normal that a few lucky dogs from an organization happened to be transported to the same place. Then, they discovered this piece of land by chance. Back then, many broken magical weapons were excavated from the ground. Although they could not be put to use directly, such resources were necessary for their internal research on weapon forging. Besides, they could sell the rest to others. Though low-priced, there were huge amounts of them here. In addition, even more discoveries were made upon further excavation. Besides broken weapons, there were numerous human skeletons as well. One could not help but wonder, why did humans die here? And when did they die? Just then, a group of individual practitioners came, excited at the sight of so many magical weapons. Seeing so many individual practitioners made those British pros rather happy too. In the end, a work system was established, with unaffiliated practitioners serving as free labor for the pros. Two class C's were even dispatched to gather more manpower. It pained the individual practitioners to accept the truth that they were happy way too early. Chapter 415, I've Got a Broken Weapon It sounded unbelievable that only 10-plus practitioners were able to keep hundreds of individual practitioners under control. At the very least, many of them could surely escape if they all dispersed at the same time. Yet, the reality was this ridiculous. No one was willing to take the lead. Besides, it was better to be a slave in a safe environment than to die in the wilderness. The two class C's turned to Lu Xu. Go down yourself and follow the rest. Everything clear? Basically, those captured unaffiliated practitioners would have accepted their fate at this step. It was a brainless job anyway, just to dig out and gather together broken weapons. At the moment, the pile of weapons was already taller than a person. The practitioner slaves were burying their heads in their work. They had become much more diligent after their red bosses took a slacker's life. Unable to win and unwilling to die, the best option possible was to finish their work fast. What if they could continue their remains exploration after this? After all, they could not possibly slaughter hundreds of individual practitioners together. Although it was an easy task, the reputation of the organization would suffer should their deeds be exposed to the public. Afterwards, other groups could easily leverage on this excuse to wipe them all from the playing field and carve up their resources. 
Yet, the scariest of all was Li Xieni. A laborer shot a glance at the newcomer behind the two class C's back, a new face. Now, they took pleasure in seeing other people being sent here. It gave them peace of mind to know that they were not the only unlucky ones in the world. However, something was off. The two class C's turned to see Lu Xu staring intently at the pile of weapons without budging a little. Many of those present had sensed it too. Was the newcomer retarded or something? Hurry up and get to work. What are you waiting for? As they stopped their work at hand and cocked their heads at Lu Xu, the noise created by excavation slowly faded off. Then, Lu Xu took his move. It can't be. Wow. In the British practitioner's stairs, Lu Xu ran towards the pile of weapons like a madman. He picked up them piece by piece with excitement beaming from his eyes, as though he had just discovered a new continent. Lu Xu almost jumped in joy and all the grudges he held towards Li Yixiao for stealing his gargoyles were evaporated instantly. With so many broken magical weapons, who needed those gargoyles? Lu Xu estimated that there were at least more than 100 pieces of weapons here. Besides, the divine water could digest magical weapons at a much faster rate than gargoyles. Thus, broken weapons were a better choice. But as a person who could always make the best out of his life, Lu Xu would never let go a single gargoyle when the situation permitted. A class C drew close, his brows knitted together. Get to work. Don't lay a finger on it. However, at this moment, the rapid disappearance of magical weapons caught his attention. The pile would be one layer lower every time he blinked. Everybody froze in shock. Where did they go? Invisible storage equipment, a person shouted in disbelief. Yes. He's stuffing those broken weapons into his invisible storage. All five class C's shuddered. It was well known that the possession of invisible storage equipment translated to high standing. Perhaps they would not be able to win if the young man was a class B. However, the young man was packing the weapons in a hurry, as though something would happen if he did not, which was rather weird. Maybe he was not a class B. Highly likely. Although nowadays most of the invisible storage equipment was in the pro's possession, but think about it, where did they get it? Since they themselves were not craftsmen, most of them had pillaged it from low-level practitioners. Thus, they suspected this boy with a cap and mask could probably be a lucky dog among individual practitioners too. Anyway, which class being needed to wear earplugs like him? The five class C's closed in slowly, and the leader demanded coldly, What are you doing, my friend? Lu Xu cast him a casual look. What? Just then, he was still busy stuffing in the broken weapons, clearly having no intention to take out his earplugs. The Class C expert took a deep breath and shouted, What are you doing? Don't you want to say something? Oh. Then Lu Xu heard it. Glancing at the Class C's who were about to surround him, Lu Xu deliberated, What should he say? After a short pause, Lu Xu answered, Thank you. From Stanton Hope's Distress, plus 666. From Staples Horace's Distress, plus 666. From. Although the practitioner slaves could not hear properly with their ears plugged up, the five class C's heard every single word from Lu Xu's mouth. They almost choked on anger. Screw you. Do you think we are digging all the weapons for you? They exchanged a look of assurance. If he were a class B, why would he waste his time on them? Since he did not go forward to rob them directly, he should not be that strong. Furthermore, their eyes were green at the young man's invisible storage equipment. Even their own class B member did not have such luxury. By the time the boy was dead, his equipment would be theirs. Thus, they would be well rewarded even if they did not get to retain the equipment themselves. Kill him, a sinister voice said. In the meantime, having packed up all the weapons in his seal of lands, Lu Xu immediately took to his heels. There was no hesitation in his movement. His actions were so experienced and smooth. 
That was totally unexpected. Chase him. It would be a shame on them if all their weapons were taken away like that. When the class C's ran out in pursuit, the individual practitioners were itching at this perfect opportunity to escape. But the risk was not overlooked. Everybody listen up. Don't let anyone leave. Kill those who ever try to escape, shouted one of the class C's. The voice was loud enough to penetrate earplugs. Instantly the laborers fell back into their obedient forms. They did not dare to take risks, even given the fact that they came to remains in search of thrills. Maybe cowards like them were doomed to suffer a pathetic life. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens